Hey everybody, listen, I know that you have been waiting for this particular interview and um, I'm about to send it your way, but letting you know we're going, we're actually working on a real estate tour so you can learn how to get involved in real estate in Ghana and you're going to have an opportunity to tour Alita's area as well as other areas. All the information is going to be in the description below. And the reason why it's so important, I encourage you to join us on this tour is because we're going to vet the potential opportunities. So many people come, you see the videos on YouTube where people get scammed out of all of their money, uh, perhaps because they didn't do their due diligence, perhaps out of naivete, perhaps out of just not knowing any better. But we're gonna walk you through it. You'll have a chance to tour the different sites. We'll have a real estate attorney on hand and understanding the dynamics and the nuances that come with purchasing real estate in Ghana. So if you're interested in this, check out the link below. I'm going to be hosting a special session where you can get the ins and outs on how you can join us in Ghana for this special tour, as well as giving you insight. We'll have special interviews, all of that good stuff. Now it's time for the interview with Alita Israel. Watch this all the way through to the end. You will not be disappointed. I said, I'm moving. It's like a light bulb came on. I said, I'm going to Ghana. And I don't mean going, like I'm going and I'm never coming back here. It's time. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Ghana came back in my memory. I packed everything, um, sold everything, gave away a lot of stuff. So that is how I got here. So and that's how they really look. They're green, like they're not orange. So they need to be called greens, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then we got greens already. All right. No, right. <laughs> <They're> orange. <laughs> right. So you have an orange here. You have avocado. You have lime. Palm they, trees. Palm coconut, trees. Coconut. Co any, name anything you want to grow. What's happening, everyone? I am beyond excited to be here because I'm here with my sister, Alita Israel. I'm here at the Israel Estates in Cape Coast, Ghana. And this interview is one interview I know so many people have been waiting for because you've been wondering how you can come to Ghana, how you can purchase land, how you can build, how you can be successful. And Alita has the blueprint. However, she's got a story to tell. <laughs> and we're going to learn about this story because her story is going to help so many of you who have interest in doing this avoid many of the mistakes, the pitfalls, yes. and all of that. So, Alita, welcome <laughs> to Maximum Impact. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me here at your estate. You now, are welcome. All right. Akwaba. Uh, Madasi. <laughs> Yo. So now this is, all right, all right what I want you to do. <laughs> it's a lot, right? <laughs> take, take the camera, take this camera and go around and let everybody see this wall that's up. And so uh, while he's taking the camera mm -hmm. and, and, and showing everybody, uh, tell me a little bit about your, <laughs> how did you end up in Cape Coast, Ghana? building this compound <laughs> um literally is, is it by yourself yeah like <laughs> all the way by myself <laughs> so how, so how, how did it all get started and, and and walk us through that process a little bit um okay so let's just start off with the fact that i came to ghana about at this point it's 17 years ago because i've been here three two years now so 17 years ago I came to Ghana with a study abroad program. Okay. I was here for 10 days and I did not want to leave. So at that point, I knew I was supposed to be here, but I was in college. I wanted to finish school, which I didn't even end up finishing school. I could have just stayed. Like I, got, I still got a semester left. What? One but semester. that's okay, because you don't need semester. a degree to be right here. Just, <laughs> yeah, one, just semester. one semester. Just one semester. Go but on the line most had it, no, other, <laughs> 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 The most I had other plans for me, okay? Because you don't need a degree to own yourself, that's okay? So you that don't need so the true. degree to live off the grid and be sustainably sufficient, you know, so self-sufficient at that um, but so I knew I was supposed to be here um, but I end up going back um, and try to make a long story short I forgot about it 15 mm. years went by I never stressed and said oh my god I gotta get the Ghana I hate it here like nothing my life just kept going different paths different paths changing and then COVID uh, 2022 
So I guess I will have to back up and say, I used to model international modeling, um, the different countries and things like that, um, before coming into the truth of who I was. Okay. Um, before understanding who I was, I was um, in sororities. I was in, you know, I was just kind of living uh, a Western life in a, a style of living that was taught to us, just mm. like everyone else. Okay. Uh, when I figured out who I was, um, and whose I was, I started to uh, isolate myself and shed off some of the things I knew that were not lawful, that were not of the Most High. Um, as I did that, the Most High completely took me out of modeling. The mm -hmm. entire industry, he sat me down after modeling and paying my bills and living my life for 15 years in that industry. And only knowing that at that, you know, outside of that industry, like hosting, I could do other stuff like I taught modeling schools. And so in that industry, though, everything was in that arena and he wanted me out completely. And so my uncle told me to come to Michigan, Detroit, which is where I moved here from. I'm from Chicago, but I moved here from Michigan. Okay. And so I came, went to Michigan and I was there for two years to detox, to take a break and try to figure out like what is happening, like what am I about to do? Um, so I was bored. And this is interesting I'm because, bored. yes, I was bored just because I was used to just working, having casting calls, um, photo shoots, video shoots. I've been on uh, billboards, magazines that was inside of Walmart. Like, I was really had a glam squad. Like, I had this certain life. This sounds like a whole different story. Whole it, did, did what a I'm whole, doing. A whole other interview. A whole other right person, now. too, yeah. that was. Oh, like, boy. So it was like I had this certain life when I went to kind of detox and figure out what I was feeling and what I was hearing. Um, I, I got bored. I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm not used to this. So then I um, got a job at Walmart. Hmm. And this was 2018. And I was became the customer service manager fairly quickly, like within like two months of So you were on the front lines of Walmart. You were doing the... the the front line. Yeah, hi, can I help you? What's the problem? Ma'am, oh. she did this. Okay, can I can I can I give you a refund real quick? So like, from modeling to Walmart. <laughs> yes. To Nana. Right, exactly. So like with model with Walmart, this is very interesting because I only did it to because I was bored and they had a holiday thing going on. Oh right, okay. And so I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go help them for Christmas. Like and then I, you know, I'm I'm just do something. At least I got yeah. the house four days a week or something like that. End up being a customer service manager, end up being there almost two years, and then got fired. Got unemployment, COVID hit, got more unemployment. Uh, was it ahead of the employment line because of that? And you probably got that, them, them, <laughs> them check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, the all of, I was ahead of the line to get all this stuff that was about to happen to our world. Hmm. And I just was getting it checked, this check. So I started saving them in addition to a little that I had already had from the career. And then 2022, uh, September, uh, the end of August, I said, I move, it's like a light bulb came on. I said, I'm going to Ghana. And I don't mean going, like I'm going and I'm never coming back here. It's time. Hmm. And then that's when Ghana came back in my memory. I had been prepping and living a life that was preparing me for this for a long time, but did not think about it. Like, so I said, I'm coming to Ghana. I, I packed everything, um, sold everything, gave away a lot of stuff. I had three luggages that I checked under the plane in a book bag. And I was scrolling through the airport like, la, 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 Just la, doing la, your la. Thing. Yep, and I never came back. So that is how I got here. So that, so you went from modeling to Walmart to Ghana. Mm -hmm. You're living, I'm assuming you're living <laughs> off of your savings. I am living off of the most high. I don't have, I don't um, live off money. Okay. Yeah, so I have money, but. Um, that's not your source. Yeah, that's not my source. My source is endless. And so um, I don't even live like for money. Like, I don't even think about a price. Like, mm -hmm. if it's something I want, like people were telling me, for example, when I started this, this um, my building here, and I started buying land my first time, I was around a lot of elders, which I still am. Um, and they already did this stuff, been there, done that. So I was picking people's brains, getting advice and things like that. Um, they were all telling me, most of them, and people who are building here and are done and living in their house, they were telling me, don't do the wall first. Like, get your house done. Like, all them bricks could have been in your house. Okay. And I'm like, that's if you thinking you can only do the house. And then when the house is there, you're like, okay, now I got some more, I'll do the fence. All of this is getting done, baby. So if I do it today, tomorrow, next year, everything will happen that I see and that I, because this is not me. It is not me that is doing it. The most high is ordaining this and planning. So when I realized who I was, who's I, who I am, and I started moving in that realm and I started keeping the laws and repenting, um, I started realizing it was about alignment, divine purpose, relationship with the most high, obedience, and literally keeping our initial laws. Like forget what we was taught. We actually are a nation of people. The black American actually have laws too. And so, once I figure that out, I don't succumb to this world anymore. I'm not 
under their government, their ordinance, their understanding of anything. So I don't operate with money. I'm not, I'm living off of uh, the most high bringing us back to a covenant that we forsook. So, so this this goes deeper than what probably mm -hmm. the average person yes, would, could even understand be, would even be able to understand. Because, mm -hmm. because when you say that, I'm looking at the results of what you've expressed. Right. Because some people, it won't make sense. Well, you know, put all of your, you know, bricks into the house. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, I'm governed by something different. Right. And I have this, so I don't have to worry about I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna do Everything this the way happening. that I'm led to put yeah. this together. Yeah. Wow. Just like when they tell you, uh, we my family, when you get married, we oh. gonna have some kids. You you in your thirties now. That I don't succumb to that understanding. <laughs> my foremothers was in their hundreds. Although they did have a different diet, still I, I wish to get back to our law, our diet, and the understanding of the purpose the most high intended for me initially. And with that care for that life, the most high is blessing me. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't got a time limit. So that's the that's the same thing as saying when people tell you that, like, man, you know, when are you gonna get a career? It's time, you're third like, no, there's no time with the most high. So you're not so for you, now is that something that you desire? Is, is yeah, it, okay. uh huh. Okay. I need it. <laughs> Because some, <laughs> some, some people say, well, it, well, some people don't, you know, yeah. that's why. So it's something you desire, you desire to be married, have children. Yes, Got it. it's definitely. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and so, but you haven't put. This will not be complete if that doesn't happen. I'm into the family hierarchy, the fold, that the most high intended, not that we were taught. So, and I'm not judging anyone, but the, in, the intention was the most high man, woman, and child. And so that fold, when that alignment is there, everything is endless and so when you get in alignment with the laws for you as a ruler then everything else just aligns so I have to get that I have to get that to get the rest of my blessings okay like, so that's that's yeah. a, a vital piece of the puzzle it is, for you. yes it really it really is so all of this coming together you come here how did you even get interested in development land development because you have how many clients 36 36 clients mm -hmm. You're a single woman mm -hmm. out here in Ghana, which sometimes is not necessarily favorable towards women. Not at all, especially being a boss of a man's staff and being a woman in the construction industry. So, so you have some stories odds. to tell. Yeah, all the odds against me, like so. But but you're governed by something different. Yeah, so, so they can't touch me. So that's this is very this is really yeah. very interesting. Yeah, I'm not touchable. So when so you're doing this, how did you even develop an interest in development, land development? Well, initially when I came here, I bought land as a collective. Those of you that know me from way way in the beginning, um, you know that I bought land as a with a group of people, and so. That fell through because um, I don't want to elaborate all okay, of that. It gotcha. didn't work out. It wasn't supposed to work out. The most high we needed to just get me in the realm of understanding certain things. So although that did not work out, I learned a lot in that process. I learned what a bull dozer looked like. Mm. I learned what the different style uh, methods of, of building, you know, rammed earth, interlocking brick, cement and block, um, you know, earth bag. I learned different methods of building. I didn't even know those were things. I learned um, so much stuff about a borehole. I first did my borehole with a collective, not on my own. So I already knew what to expect, the questions to ask, how it would look, you know, things like that. So that didn't work, but it, it got me, it, it helped me with what I'm doing right now. So to answer the question, I don't got land now. I, I said it didn't work. So now I need land still. I still want land. So I got with, um, it's a collective here, the Pan-African Village. I got with them to try to, um, because of uh, Rabbi Kohen Halevi, I got with them and he hooked me up to try to get me a plot of land. Um, so I secured me one plot of land initially, just that plot over there. Just over there, okay. Yeah, just one. And then um, I just said, you know, I don't know how I'm going to develop this. I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, I just want to make sure I got some land. So then Rabbi... Um, I started to be a part of his camp, like closer to him and help him. And he was helping me like he's like my mentor now. But we got closer and closer. As we got closer, he started to learn my personality and said that you probably should sell land and because and, our people would like you. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I got like I have like a no nonsense type of attitude, but I'm also cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but so he was saying like my people, our people would listen to me. They would respect me and they would like me. And I was just like, you know, OK, I just wanted a way to make money mind you this is the time where I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna make more money here living here um, so 
rabbi told me um, to start selling the land. He'll hook me up and show me how it works or whatever. Um, and then, uh, long story short, people were wasting my time. I was talking to people all day, every day, and was getting nowhere. People was just fascinated by my life in Ghana. People was just like a follower of mine and wanted to just like see me and talk to me. They was not buying land. And so I went back to rabbi. I said, this is not going to work. Like, people are wasting my time. I don't have that type of time for people. And I'm not even trying to be rude. I just literally don't have the type of energy to give, 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 give. So he said, you need to isolate who's buying into you and who's buying into the land. Mm. Who's, who's buying into land. You need to isolate who's fake from who's real, who's serious from who's not. And the way you do that is put a small price on talking to you. And I said, okay, so the consultations I need to make, like, what, like $50? And he was like, yeah, because it's not about the money. You're not trying to get rich off consultations. You're qualified. You're tr yeah, you're trying to yeah. qualify them and take out who don't really got no money. Mm -hmm. If you got $50 for a consultation, you probably got a little money to put your fence up and start buying a house. Right. If you don't, if you stressing me over $50 and what that come with and how, well, I gotta, then you probably don't, you probably not ready for yeah, this. that's um, the truth. And it started, it worked like a, like magic. Folks, jokers fell off real quick. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the cash apps came in real quick as well. And so, yes, and so it went from there. Um, that situation with that king started having problems. And then I still wanted to do this. So I met with the other chief next door, uh, met his family, you know, vetted them, got to know them, and I started selling his land. And now we have a better opportunity. I feel like a better deal. Um, and I have more shalom. I have peace with this, with this particular opportunity. So yeah. that's how it got started. That's fascinating because, uh, again, there are many people who are wondering. They hear they hear the horror stories. Yes, it's a lot of. Them. They hear the stories about people double selling land. Mm -hmm. um, I'm dealing with something now, or two properties that I'm working with. Slow progress. Mm -hmm. um, doing a due diligence on one uh, piece of property, found out that the person couldn't sell some of the land. But that's why the due diligence process yes, is so important. The vetting is serious. It, it's very serious. Mm -hmm. But even with all of that, you didn't quit, mm -hmm. and you you're persevering through all of this, and you have. Um, started developing this uh, three plot compound with this, uh, and I, I, I'm going to call it a 5,000 square foot mansion <laughs> that, that you're building right here. And, and because, because a lot of times for us, especially coming from the West, mm -hmm. we'll hear the horror stories. And, and for whatever reason, we gravitate towards that. And then we say, okay, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's too hard. Mm -hmm. But when I come here, I see all everybody else from Europe and Asia. Mm -hmm. And they have no problem building. Nope. Living their best life. I mean, living in high rises, yes. driving Range Rovers and Maybox Man, and all. Man, investing yeah. in every big company you see around us. Buying all of the land that we're afraid to buy. Yeah, buy the hundreds of acres at yes. that. Like. And then we're not, and because we don't want to be bothered with some of the headaches, yeah. but they're coming in and, and doing this. Um, so to see what you're doing, I mean, when I, when I walked here, uh, at the compound, that's what I'm calling it now. Yeah, the it's compound. in the state. It's, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's state. in the state. When I, when I pulled up and I saw the wall was up and I'm seeing the foundation for the house already laid, clearly you're doing something right because oh, yeah. this is, I mean, it's really impressive. One, to see the size of the home, but then also to see the fact that you came here with Nothing in the eyes of the av the way the average person would see it. Yeah, the normal world. The no yeah. the, mm -hmm. But you now are able to come and develop this. I mean, I see your your stones here. I see your sand, your sand and your topsoil. I believe that is that topsoil. Yeah, there? that's the soft sand. Soft sand. Yeah. Okay, in the back. Yeah. Okay, the soft sand. I see your trees here. I see you have your layout. Your you have borehole. your borehole. Yeah. You have all of these things Hallelujah. in place. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's this is so impressive, and you also have thirty six clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because you have these clients, people are trusting you. Yeah. Now that's one issue that I know where we come from in the states, mm -hmm. especially us trusting each other. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to navigate that part? Because everybody's thinking about, oh, it's a scam. This is a scam. Right, this is right. scam. Even you know, right. they, they, some people might feel more comfortable if you had, um, if your skin complexion was white. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They yeah. might feel more comfortable. Right. But how, how have you navigated that? Um, that's a good question. Basically, I don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want all the money. I am rich. I don't need dollars. Rich is money, good health, good relationships, shalom, peace. You know, rest. That's rich. So I'm rich. So if I was doing this for money, I would tolerate that attitude and that behavior. But because I don't have to work for money, um, I just have to keep the laws. Then I don't tolerate it. So anybody who's coming 
and want to say, well, such and such got scammed. Did you see that video on such and such? I'd be like, nah, I don't got time to entertain what's not happening for others because everything is like happening for me. Yeah. Um, and so if your mindset is not solely on what's happening for me and you want some of this, I just be like, I let you finish and I let us get off, but I probably won't work with you. I probably won't help you. Like, so basically anybody who talk about like scamming stuff. Now, mind you, I got to give you a little peace of mind yeah, to of understand course. that, you know, this is real mm -hmm. and that there's nobody trying to get over you over here. I do have to give you a little bit of that, but you already came knowing like, sis, I feel you. Right, right. And I'm not making up the words they can say. I'm not, um... Paint, I'm not creating a story here. Like, I'm telling you a real scenario. Like, they are like, sis, I feel you. I know the most I sent you to me. I've been thinking about this for years. Today, my answer, I ran across your video and all my answer questions was answered. Like, when they come to me, they're supposed to come to me. And they are already on a certain level um, of moving forward. And so my job then is to continue to inspire. I don't convince. Right. I encourage. And so if I have to convince you, um, it's nice to meet you. And hopefully in the future we can work together. But at this time, I'm on go mode. Like, I can't deal with those. You know, it's a remnant of people that understand what's happening. That remnant is asking questions. That remnant is uh, visiting places and, and checking, vetting different parts of Africa. That That's the remnant. And, and it's also a remnant sitting still, just wondering, inquiring. They feel something, but they don't know. They're scared, they're comfortable, whatever. But then there's an elite inside of that remnant that's like, sis, I'm ready to pay tomorrow. I can't wait to May for your consultation. Like, I'm trying to buy land tomorrow. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, cause you know, I'm booked up till May for my consultation. That's yeah, how serious yeah, this yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I got something, that, the, I, I think it, I can help you here. Yeah, I, I and I'm excited. Can, this is can, all the most high. <laughs> I think I can like, help this situation. Like, this is my help, y'all, like. <laughs> I think we could put something together here. Yeah, I need a, a, a assistant, a personal assistant, a receptionist, you know what I'm yeah, saying? We, yeah, we got you. I need you. an IT tech I, I'm person. I'm a systems person. Yeah. Because, you know, just, I mean, we go to 12 different countries yes, that's in dope. Africa, and, and I tell people all the time, I say the way I'm able to do it is because of the systems. Mm -hmm. But what you said that was so key, uh, I tell people, if like if my if people email in or call in to, to the staff mm -hmm. and they have all that drama, mm -hmm. nope. we've been known to put people off of tours. Nope. So don't even, we don't want your yep. money here, take your money I back. will refund you in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yep. It's cause if, if you've you, ever got a refund from me, it meant we not vibing. Yeah. Like if we get off the consultation, I'll do the whole consultation too. I'll let you finish. I'll let you waste my time. Let you answer all these questions, and I will never talk to you again. That's not I a free consultation. Dude. That's not free. Like man. that's the free one. That yeah, one okay, because okay, I okay. decided I don't want to move forward with you. Yeah. But I don't need you in that spirit you in going yeah. to say she took fifty dollars and she won't even help me buy land. So here's your fifty dollars back. Yes. I don't owe you yes. nothing. I'm keeping my shalom because like I told you earlier, I won't tr trade my shalom for your freedom. That's right. I want you to have freedom. It feels good. Yeah. But I got to keep my peace and my freedom. Like, That's right. So, yeah, I I don't I have a no nonsense attitude with that type of stuff. A lot of people are going through what they're going through because they're not keeping the laws. People don't want to hear me. They think I'm talking religious. This is not no religion. This ain't no church. This ain't man made. This is literally not no cult, no organization like this is getting back to our initial um, law, getting back to who we were as a people. Like, as an Israelite, you are a people. As a Hebrew, we have a language and a culture. Like, we are somebody, and we are the body. <laughs> like, we are over everyone. So, I'm telling people, I'm not going through what the rest of the world is going through with this journey here, because I am trying my best to care about the law. And where do you find the law? The first five books of the Bible is the Torah. That's our book. I don't care what other religions take it and preach from it. I don't care about no pastors, none of that. You don't even need a church for this. This is understanding what you eat, how you dress, how you talk, how you walk, your moral code, your character, like all, every question you have, first five books of the Bible. Thank me later. Like. And, and, that, and that's what, that, that's the, your, how you live. And yes. That's, and, and that's what you attribute to being able to So they to can't touch in. me. Think about this. If, if you have, if you're under a certain government and you have subjected yourself to that government, mm -hmm. so you mess up, then the government got to put you back in line and you accept the penalty. So you're back in line. And now you're under their their law. You're authority. their slave, authority, mm -hmm. yeah. So now can I do this? Can I, now you're asking questions, you're raising your hand. So you're in that order. I have taken myself out of the order and took myself back to the most highest order intended for this type of people. 
And basically, so that order can't touch me because I don't succumb to it. So I got to get permission to touch me. Got it. So that's why these things can't. Now, mind you, the Most High won't will give you things to make you stronger. You will be tested. I'm not saying it's all easy, but you have a different understanding of it. You handle it different. You deal with it differently, mm -hmm. and you move differently. And so, with this particular understanding, I don't have to work. All the drama, wickedness, and stress is outside of this ordinance. Like it's not within this law. This law is for your peace. Got it. Yeah. So. Well, I, I you know, I'm seeing the results. Hallelujah. I'm looking around and okay. I'm saying, okay, you have the home that's being constructed. How long do you think it's going to take for you to finish the home? Um, I'm hoping by June or July that I can um, at least live into the first level. Okay. Um, and so I can move into one of my guest bedrooms while they finish the top and then obviously while we finish develop, developing a, a state. Um, so that's kind of what I got my focus on is June or July. Okay. Now yeah. let's dive into some of the technical aspects of this because I know Inquiring minds want to know that, let's say, for example, they pass the test, they go, they pass the uh, initial call, mm -hmm. the, and consultation. the consultation, mm -hmm. and they're ready to make a move. Because mm -hmm. I think that what you've conveyed is you're looking for people who are serious. Yeah, and ready. And, not, not and ready who, mean mentally detoxed. Yeah. Not just got no money. I don't care about money. Please understand that. The not just got money, not just ready to move, not that, not that understand uh, America is doomed, not that, not that you're Israelite and you Hebrew. None of that matters. You come with me. Your spirit is in check. You practice the fruits of the spirit. We talk and we on the phone for hours because it's enjoy, it's enjoyable, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Like we're this is a long journey. It's a long I journey. have to do this relationship with these people every day. I gotta talk yeah. to them. Yeah. So if I don't want to talk to you, how this gonna work? You get it's on money. my nerves. And it's not enough money. No, <laughs> thank you. You ain't got enough money. Let me like, put that in. So I <laughs> yes. Uh uh. So if you get past the consultation, it mean we good, baby. You you have mentally detoxed. That's what I need, like. But for you to have found 36 people mm -hmm. to be able to work with. Uh, and I think that's what's fascinating. And they're amazing. You know, that because to come to a, as the way we've been told, mm -hmm. foreign land. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> That's good. You like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so as what the, that's how it's been framed to us. We come to a so-called foreign land, but then you find people that you probably have never met before. You met them maybe by way of social media or through word of mouth yeah. or some sort of yeah. uh, other way. And now you are spearheading these projects. Mm -hmm. So you actually help people go from the beginning to the end of the process. Yep. All right, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, so after the consultation is done, um, the next step, which would be you going back to your family, um, going over that information I just shared with you, going over that conversation we just had, and y'all deciding how much land you want to buy. Uh, when you decide how much land you want to buy, you let me know you're ready. I send you my banking information or whatever style of payment that we have decided on that consultation. I send you my information um, for you to complete that payment. Once the payment is done, I am going to schedule you for payment of the land. And I'm saying schedule because I have my company organized within the system. And so I'm only one person, but it's thousands of you. So I have to find a way for us to rotate like a well-oiled machine. And so what I've created is an assembly line where I move each client through phases and I just keep going through them so that I'm not confused, I'm not forgetting anyone. And so I'm not stressing myself out. And so initially your first uh, uh, placement, I guess, on the assembly line would be to get the land paid for. So that will determine, be determined by when I receive the indentures that was given, that was bought before you. And you will thank me for that because when it's your time to wait for your paperwork, you would thank me for not getting hundreds of more clients while you don't have any paperwork. So the first thing is just the wait. It's about two weeks. And when I receive my next bunch of, bunch of uh, paperwork or ditches or deeds from the last clients, then I'll go pay for yours. And then after I pay for it, we start the actual plan of the house. So the fa um, the blueprint, um, the buying 5,000 bricks to start the fence, um, clearing the land, of course. Um, and then we uh, talk about the company fee, the workers fee and things like that. And so from there, we just move in phases. Like once you get the land paid for, I send you phase one, which will say phase one, the price and everything I'm gonna complete for you in that phase. And we do the entire development of the property that way, all the way up until everything is done. So 
I'm gonna walk you through each step. You're not gonna have to worry about every, anything all the way down into your building permit. We can't just build out here. The one thing we do need is a builder's permit. So I'm gonna get that for you. Um, you want your land registration. So the land needs to be registered initially with the owner, yes. But you have to also go back to commissions and put it in your name and to also make sure that the owner that's on your paperwork is the owner in that computer. So they're the outright owner of that land. So I'm gonna do all of that for you. Um, I make the process as seamless as possible so I'm going to be sending you pictures and videos throughout the whole ordeal. We're going to be talking every day. This is why I can't deal with people who are not ready because I, I talk to my clients every day. I know their families. I know what they like. I know what they don't like. Like we become best friends. This is my family. Like I'm picking my neighbors and building a tribe here. And so basically from there, we just keep going on your time, on your dime. Here's phase one. Here's the price. Here's what I'll do. We complete it. Then we show you pictures and videos. Then here's phase two. Here's the price. This is what I'll do. And we keep going all the way to the house is done. Your garden is done. Your borehole. No more water bill. Your solar panels. No more electric and power bill. Like we keep going until everything is developed. If you want a chicken coop or a beehive, as I myself do. Anything you can desire, I can figure out how to make it done for you. Your only job is to keep me in my shalom so I can keep you in yours. At any point, I can drop you. We're not contracting each other. So if phase two, phase three, you start getting on my nerves then, I'm gonna say, hey, here's where we at. Here go the, <laughs> I'm so serious. Oh, I love this. Like, yeah, I'm over here like, about to jump out I'm, of my Cause y'all know our people. They, y'all, everybody that's listening and watching us, y'all already know how the black American get down. Oh, I do not work for you. Lord. I work with you to unfold your vision. I work for myself. I work for my family. I work for the most high. Let's be clear. So if we have that understanding, we'll have a long-term relationship and we can get the project done. So long story short, after, I want to say this part. I'm bringing my company, my team is bringing a literal meaning to the words come home. So they usually mean come back to the continent, come back to Ghana particularly. I mean come home. When I'm done with you, I'm doing even your interior decorating. You come put your curtains up. I mean, you come put your clothes in your uh, dresser. You can come take a shower, come pick your tomatoes. I mean, come take a nap in your bed. I'm helping you with cabinet tops and ceiling fans and tile. We're doing everything for you. So this is a one-stop shop, but it's only intended for the elite. So if you know you're not the elite and you got some healing to do, you got attitude problems, this ain't for you. And I'm just being real. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> yeah. I, see that, that goes two ways. Yeah. Like, girl, I like her. Right. I then it's like, call, right. I need to call her. Girl, right. let me get on the phone. I need to call. But then it also Lita. mean you gotta address yourself too. Is yeah. it you? Like, like that ain't me, girl. Right. You, okay. I, I don't know. This. Right. No, my people be calling like, oh my god, girl, I love you. Like they can't wait to see me. Well, you it's got beautiful. me sold. I'm sitting up here you watching. You feel me? I'm sitting your money. I, I, like, I got the money. I'm gonna write this bag, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. No, see, I inspire. No, I don't gotta do. come. I don't. I didn't convince you. You didn't at I all. I inspired you because you already here in yeah. this. You already do this. You're yeah. a part of this. So yeah. So I mean, but listening to what Alita said, I mean, it's something that uh, is so real. You know, because a lot of times what we do, we want to go someplace on the cheap because back in America, that's how we've been groomed. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're not willing to pay to play, you're not gonna play. Yeah. That's the bottom line. You're gonna play yourself. And so she's come working on. hard. The sisters out here putting in the work, paving the way, literally. Mm -hmm. And she just doesn't have time for the foolishness that people yeah. will bring, and they want you to bring your price down. Yeah. How come you can't, can you bring it down? Can you, instead of saying, you know what? I appreciate the effort that you put in to yeah. pay, to be a pioneer in this, and I have no problem. You tell me what I need to do, I, and, and I'll step back and let you lead the way. So yeah. those are the type of people. Right, that I want. Yeah. Because I also remember they came to me and y'all, if y'all this far with me, you done send me thousands of dollars to build your house and things like that, then you already know my character. Yeah. Like you really already know the type of person we you dealing with. Yeah. So don't try to be like, you said my paperwork is gonna be done in three weeks. Ma'am, okay, it's four weeks though. Like, so what you wanna, what you wanna fight? Yeah, like, you know this is ridiculous. Do. Like, I live in a developing, I'm gonna say that, yes. you know, for, as he said, foreign country, as they taught it was a foreign country. This is foreign to me because even though my ancestors come from this land, I don't. And everything was new to me, having the price change different, having people overcharge me because I'm um, American, mm -hmm. um, have people talk to me a certain type of way because I'm a woman in a certain type of business and I have an army of men doing what I say. Like, it's like amazing to be in this position, but it's not easy. So I need y'all to make it a little easier for yeah, us, sister. Like some stuff, y'all don't know what I go through. No, they don't. Like I be having to give rides to people, like just because I bought 
cement from them. <laughs> because I, I appreciate you saying it. It's like you be able to say things. I, I, I do you say. say it. I know I say it. <laughs> okay, I say it. Yeah. Yeah. I do say it. I do say it. I do say it. Right, okay. He's like, never mind. I'll say <laughs> yeah, it. I do say it. I say it. <laughs> but, but it's so real. And because you're willing to be here and do it, um, I know people will connect with that. They'll respect what you're doing. You know, taking on, uh, and I'll just use the word entrepreneurship for lack of better words, mm -hmm. to be able to take on an entrepreneurial endeavor, uh, many people don't understand that. Right. And, and so they right. come uh, to the, they approach it more or less from an entitlement perspective. Mm -hmm. I gave you my money, you need to do what I say. Yeah, and like, like I work for them. Like, and it's like, yo, you're getting something back in return. Yes. We're actually trying to put you in a better position. You say you want these different come things. Come on, somebody. And, but and, things happen here. The lights go out here. Yeah. What I'm going to do? Who I'm going to fight? I need they a They don't refund. do receipts here. They I need still, a refund. They still, right, thank you. They still on the moral code here. They yeah. shake hands. That still means something. And the price will change after you shake hands. Thank you. That's a whole number. It's like, so y'all don't understand. <laughs> I, all the vendors I bring to y'all, y'all, I have to get y'all cement, stone, sand, dirt. Um, I have to make blocks for y'all. I have to do your water supply here. I have to do everything. Do y'all know I have to make arrangements with each individual? Because for, for your paperwork, every time I come, they want to tell me something different. I done told you one price. Now I come with them and they're like, oh, no, nah, we're going to need more because now they see all the work I'm bringing. Yeah. I have to get the understanding to say, sir, do you want this work or not? I need a set price and you ain't never changing it. Yes or no? And you got okay, to deal now with we that. got yeah. So I've got and every got single person to operate the way I need them to give y'all these numbers. I give y'all these figures. I give y'all this doing it in a certain amount of time the way I give it to y'all. I have to I have to fight for that position. Yeah. You know y'all getting a 99 year leasehold through me. Everybody else so getting 50 59 55 years. years. So you're 99 years. I am, but everybody else getting 50 else years. Okay. Yeah. Now what's the difference between an indenture and a deed? Because I the know same. it's the same thing. Yeah, it's just a um, we call it an indenture here, America call it a deed but even on a denture that i give you it's gonna say deed on it okay yeah, so it's the same thing can the person sell the land no be, it, they can pass it down to their family it's leasehold okay leasehold land. so okay. you can pull it through you can push it through your family uh it's family land okay and so you cannot make a profit and bring a stranger in it okay but you can put your children on a deed you know you can after 99 years or if you pass you can give it to your granddaughter your grand you know your daughter it can keep going through your family forever Cause, but you can't make a profit off. So of this it is now. not some place you build it, you build it up, and then you just sell it. You can't, you can't flip the land for like. No, you can't flip okay. it, but you can rent it. So if you uh, want to do an Airbnb, you can do that. If you want to do apartment complexes, you can do that. You can do that. You can do businesses. Got it. You can make money on it. Got it. Yeah, you just can't. The actual land is family land, so we want you to send it to your daughter and to your granddaughter, and then they send it to their daughter. Just keep in the family. Got it. So it doesn't yeah. end up going all over the place. And yeah, then and that's when the, the opportunity. people from Europe and Asia come in, yeah. now all of a sudden they, they sold all the it. land off. Mm -hmm. Now a question somebody might ask. Um, do, do people need to, uh, that you work with, do they need to share your particular philosophy as far as, no. okay, because mm -hmm. I know that may come up No, because it's, all of us is on this journey I'm on. Okay. We just got different ways, different routes of getting to the, got this. It. Okay. So most people are eating a certain way and have a certain moral code already. Most people are already mentally healed and are loving their life and appreciating the most highs allowances here. Like most people are already operate and live a certain lifestyle that garners peace mm. because they're still keeping the laws. They're just not constantly saying that's a law. Got it. Just like here in Ghana, these these people keep the laws, the Torah, they keep the Torah. They just don't say we keep the Torah. They still really believe in white uh, Jesus, blue eyes, blonde <laughs> yeah, hair. See, yeah, but see. they law is our law. For example, if we and you have a problem and in America, we're going to try to fight it out, go through all these things that I'm going to take you to court, bring the police involved, all this stupid stuff. We got a law to handle that. Me and you figure it out together. Mm -hmm. If we can't figure it out, we bring in our fathers. If they can't help us figure it out, we bring in the elders. The elders can't help us figure it out, we bring in the mentors. They can't help us figure it out, then we go to the drug. Got it. Here, this is what they do. Even if you try to go to the judge on him, go the judge the gonna say, did you talk to the chief? Right. Did you talk to your elders? He gonna send you back. That's right. So that's a law. I've seen it. I've yes. Seen it. So oh, I, don't, I ain't looking for you to be that. I'm just looking for you to have a certain understanding and calmness and patience right. and just tolerance. Be, to be civil. You, you know, you know how we used to be. Civil. It used to be a civil <laughs> world. Like I used to have to ask for respect. Well, you know, with that said, you have my utmost respect because I see what you're doing. And Thank I, you. I know what it takes to put all of this together. I know, I know the journey, spending time here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Now you're working with, um, you have people on this side of you, mm -hmm. you have people on this side of you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, you want to walk quickly over yeah, here? Yeah, let's go let's see, go. The, we'll go towards the headquarters because I'm building the Ghana Consultations headquarters uh, right down this street on okay. two plots of land. Um, 
partnership deal with one of my workers, actually. Okay. So now, uh, Joe, he's my business partner with this particular project that we're doing. Okay. Um, so with Ghana Consultations, just for everybody, because people are starting to know Joe and things like that. Um, with Ghana Consultations, Joe is my project manager. He's my right hand. Um, and so with that, he's a hired source. And like everybody else, Joe is just, he's the source I hire to come into the company to do a certain part. Okay. But with this particular company, he's my partner. And it's is, 50, is this a uh, piece of land right here? Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is a project that you're working on right now with Joe. Yep, this is a business we're starting. All right. Um, we'll, it's a surprise, so we'll tell them yeah, tell it later. Tell more it about later. what we're doing. Uh -huh. But this is two plots of land. I have some orange trees, some avocado trees oh. over here. Find out. Right, like that's how you know I'm rich and it ain't about money. I own you, trees, you, you feel me? You grow your own fruit and produce and... You feel me? I got coconut, mango, coconut, key lime. Mangoes. Um, this avocado and orange. So this out. right here, since we're here, to the right of us. That's a garden right there, right? Or is it? No, no, this is one plot of land. There's two plots, there's one in front of each other. Oh, okay. So this is one of my clients, the uh, Black family. Okay. Yep, so they got two plots of land, they've cleared it. Um, they got oranges, key lime, lemons, okay. and they're getting ready to fence it within the next month or so. And these people talk about Africa's poor. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, looking right, I'm looking right here. At food, On right? this tree. What are these, limes? No, these are oranges. These are oranges right yeah. here. I'm not going to pick it, but right here. Yeah, it ain't ready yet. That's an orange. You can pick it, but yeah. Well, I'll pick it. Right, we just want to show them. Yeah. I got plenty. Well, I don't want to come You feel on. me? What, what's up? It's an orange. Who need a grocery store? It's an and that's how they really look. They're green, like... They're not orange. So they need to be called greens, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, then we got greens already. Right, right, no, right. That is big orange. <laughs> right. So you have an orange here, you have avocado, you have limes. Palm they, trees, palm coconut, trees, coconut corn, any, Name anything you want to grow. Mm -hmm. You can grow in this rich soil, but they say Africa's poor. Right. If Here's that's the case, why is everybody plots. here? Another okay, exactly. Family? It's another two plots of land for the Joseph family. Okay. They're building on their own, so I'm not developing for them. Okay. But and I there's land getting get cleared off up here. Yep. This here, though. Okay, right here. This the Blair family. This block, this whole block, left this, and right, is all mine. Yeah. This is a block. I mean, you are building a community. <laughs> yeah, so this is, they, they did the same steps I did. Got the wall up. We'll plaster it in a minute. Got the security post. They wanted a one level, so all we right. stopped there for them. They got their house up. This is a three bedroom. That's a two car garage. Okay. We extended it a little bit because it won't only fit one. Um, so, yeah, that's the living room area. Let me show you this. Let's go on that back there. This is brilliant. Because, again, the possibilities and it takes courage to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part. Yeah. And I mean, now you're inside the home. Yeah, this is the living room. Living room. Right. It's like a dining area. And they got an area back here in the back. This laundry. That's two bit, two guest bedroom, two bathrooms. Okay. This laundry and storage. Laundry. This is their deck. Look at their backyard. Wow. Right. Look at the backyard. And this day, because they got a three, they got an L like mine. Wow. But this is 380 by 80 plots. Mine is 380 by 100, just mm. to show you the size difference. Wow. But here is theirs too. That's over there. Oh, there's there's that, two. Where that wall stopped. There's oh, like, you know how mine's shaped like yeah, an L? Yeah, that's yeah. how theirs is too. So that's they line, that's all they material over there. Okay. These are orange trees. They got oh. some yams. I mean, I'm just looking at this orange, this green mm -hmm. <laughs> that's in my hand. Yeah. Um, it's something that I believe people need now. I'll go this way, okay. They got their poly tank and borehole too. Okay. Yeah. Right here we're on one more plot of land. Okay. But they is that, only is that all of yours too? Yes, these are everything you see. This whole we ain't even doing. I'm gonna take you to your tour people. Okay. Yeah, your um the people the ladies that was on your tour. Yeah. My sisters. Renee. Renee, yeah. Brandy. Yep. Brandy, they sisters, and they're right, right in front of each other. That's right. Some people, other people, I think Dolores. James, Dolores, and Dolores, uh, Tyrone. Dolores is here. Those are my people. You don't understand how close I am to those people. That's, that's amazing, right? I so mean, they, very they, close. They, they're doing the right thing, then we're in alignment. They that's what been it means. On three and four of my tours. Wow. They're going with me to South Africa wow. in August. This is one plot for the Progen family here that's over there next to the wall. Okay. Then it's a road. 
Then this is the King family over here. All right. Where the bricks are on that side. That's one plot. This is Brandy's. Okay, Brandy. Two plots. Brandy's right here. Yeah, we on, we on Shalom right now. We are we on Renee. I call them by their estate name. Got it, got it. This is this is uh. Renee and Jeff. Ren this is Renee right now. Okay, this is Renee. Renee got four plots. Oh, wow. Yeah, Go so. Ahead, Renee. Right. <laughs> Big baller, let me find out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is Brandy. So, Brandy, have, she's on phase three now. Okay. So, she got her fence up. We got to put her rails in between. Her security post started over there. Her and her sister wanted a low wall okay. so that they could see each other, access each other's property. So, they got a door they share. They share right they there. fence not done. We're going to eat with her, leveling it out. Okay. Um, Renee just sent for her second phase. So, she's getting ready to get her fence up starting uh this week wednesday let me find out maximum impact representing <laughs> right impact and don't even know it don't even know it that's what i'm so talking this about this is two plots of land for the mccray family okay. this is my queen mother um and then you have four plots of land for dolores up here yeah that she just cleared them so all of what you see cleared at this top is dolores wow four plots for her so you, you say you know James, but really quick, this is also Shalom, uh, Renee. Renee Estate is called Shalom Estate. Shalom so Estate. that's why I keep saying Shalom. Brandy Estate is called Express Estate. Okay. So normally I use their estate name, so I would keep trying to mix them up. But this is also Brandy's one plot. Oh, Brandy has a plot here too? Yeah, because she, she want a shade area, palm trees. We want to keep more of her orange trees. Okay. So we'll weed this out manually when she's ready. If we take the bulldozer, it'll, it'll it can't cut in everything. between the trees she want to keep. Wow. So this is also also uh, Renee's one plot too. So all of what you see over here is Mr. James Ezell's four plots of land. We just cleared it about maybe three, four days ago. I see something. you, James. Yeah. I see you. So him and Brandy share this, this wall right here. Okay. I can't wait to see it all come together. Cause right, because the, the, the roads is what's going to bring it together. Yeah. Like it's like when we, we're clearing them now, but we need to level them and we need to tar them, which is which we're doing as a community. Okay. So when everybody gets to uh, like phase 10, that's when I'm going to start going and collect and telling people, hey, you got two rows by you, let's tar. They're not doing that here. Mm -hmm. So this is something I'm bringing, this is a standard from what we used to that I'm bringing here. So this whole community is going to have regular roads. Tar like, road, asphalt road. Yeah, so the, the rain won't be changing the shape of them. Mm. So you have all of this is Mr. All of this is uh, James. All of this is James. Yep. Let me find out. I'm coming to That's have palm dinner. Trees, right? And everybody's home. Okay. James, Brandy, we, Dolores, Renee. Uh, Renee, and yep. uh, I tell Jeff and Tyrone, I'm coming over. Uh, Wait, who's Tyrone? Well, Tyrone's Dolores' husband. Oh, I was just gonna say, I was saying, I think that's my client too. Like, yeah, what it yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I so, knew the name. Because yeah, so. <laughs> I thought we was gonna say another one. I'm like, no, wait, I know no, that no. one too. But yeah. okay, that's her husband. Yeah, You're from right. Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee. Um, so I, I can't wait. I mean, that, I'm, I'm telling you, this is deep for me because they were the first group that came during COVID. Mm, let's go by Ezell Palm okay. Tree so I can get out this. Ezell Palm Tree. Yes, let's so, hit that palm tree up. They were the first group that came. Mm hmm. Uh, and they were, this was June of 2021. Mm -hmm. So they were really like the first people who trusted me with their journey. Here. Yes, and, beautiful. Uh, and, to, and to see all of them in a community together mm -hmm. is really. It's cool, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's really something special. It, it says that, you know, that there's something special going on. Yeah. And, and I'm like, realizing I'm it. running from the sun. <laughs> running from the sun, running from the sun. There we go. Yeah, we yeah. just need a hammock right here, Mr. Azel. <laughs> yeah, this is um, but but you know, oh, I am so excited for what you're doing. Thank you. And and I believe that uh, you have a, a great system in place to vet people, mm -hmm. um, because people will waste your time. Yes. And um, and stress you out. And stress you out. Uh, and I can tell you that the group that you're working with, uh, I know my folks, they're not going to stress you out. No, yeah. I love your folks. <laughs> and I, I love all, I got some good clients. I can tell, yeah. You know, but some of them I'm getting closer with than others because some may move faster than others, so I work with them, talk yeah. to them more. Um, but this group right here, yeah. oh yeah, these are my people. Yeah. I love them. They work with me, you know, things they don't understand, they ask questions, you know, I give them the answer. They're always accepting if things are delayed. They're just cool. They're they moving. They give you grace. They when it's phase grace. one, yeah, yeah, when it's phase one, they're ready for phase one. And phase two, they're doing phase two. Like, they're just, they're ready. They're mm -hmm. ready. Like, you know, so we're having a big party one day. And, you know, Ghana Consultation is going to spearhead it, and we are going to have a community block party. And I can't wait for that day. 
Well, everybody, I, I mean, well, let me ask you this. Is there anything else you want to share with everyone? I know we covered a lot of territory. I mean, <laughs> we did. you've shared the good, the bad, the ugly, the great, yeah. uh, the vision. Um, you've covered, I mean, really, when you, you got to breaking it down about some of the challenges that you faced. Mm -hmm. And I think that people understand that this is a journey and it's a process. And if other cultures and other people from other places can come to this land and somehow come here and dominate, well, we shouldn't have all of the appreh apprehension and fear, and, and it really takes a particular type of person with a particular mindset mm -hmm. to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to take a chance because mm -hmm. everybody else in the world can take a chance. Right. Why can't I take a chance? Especially since we come from this part of the world, we can trace ourselves and, find, and see that we came from this part of the world and that other part. parts of the world as well. Yeah. But it's, it's something about that, uh, I believe. So is there anything you want to share with them, everyone as we get ready to wrap this up? Um, I just kind of how I end all the videos when I'm doing interviews, just to just do it, you know, don't try to wait for the right amount of money. Don't try to wait for the right timing. Um, this is not about you. If you have any, even a small inkling that you should do this, then it's spirit moving you. It's your ancestors talking. And so your job is to be obedient and just do it and let the world handle the rest. And you can know the world will work on your behalf when you get back to the laws. So repent, get back to who we are as a people, um, get back to the laws, listen to spirit, and literally just let life happen. Like we're supposed to be happy. We're not supposed to be living check to check. We're not supposed to be in debt. We're not supposed to be working like, you know, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. We're not supposed to be retiring at 65. Like I'm retired right now. I'm 36, I'm 37, I'm turning 37 in December. But right, yeah, right. so you can have this, you know, everything. I didn't do nothing special. So that's the last thing I wanna say is that everybody keep writing me and saying like, you know, why did you do this? What did you do? Like, what was the first step you took in? How did you make sure you was gonna be successful? How did you know, like, I'm sorry to sound cliche, but it is not by my might. It is the most high. Like, and so I need y'all to get back to the father, get back to who you are. And who we are, it doesn't have to do with religion. I'm not talking about no sanctified, glory filled, deep, can't have a drink. I'm not talking about none of this speaking in tongues. I ain't talking about no religion. I'm talking about study who you are. I'm telling you to study yourself. And then when you get there, ask the most high for understanding and go in the direction that garners peace. And so realize that the Most High knows what's best for you. He would never put more on you than you can bear. And just do it. Get out of your own way. Be quiet. Sit down. Just do it. So That's the word for today. Just do it. We'll give you more details on what we're going to put together. Yeah. So how that so we'll can work. We'll do another video. Too. Yeah. So it's yeah. very clear. So that you understand uh, how to do this. Because I'm a systems person. I don't play any games either. Mm -hmm. I think people kind of figure that out too. So it's mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, we're trying to do things right, yes. orderly. Decent, decent and, and in order. order. Like, decent so, and in order. So that there's no way that somebody can look back and say, oh man, I got scammed. I got right. taken advantage yeah. of. That's we, the first we, thing we people want to say. We record keeping, documenting. Everybody got a role to play. Everybody got a job to do. It's a system. And if everybody, you know, do their part, then it's, you won't have any even fear that yeah. things are not happening uh, in your, in, on your behalf, like, you know, for your best benefit, I should say. So, yes, we're working in y'all interest and for the benefit of the people, but we need y'all to work with us back so that we can actually get some stuff get accomplished. Get some stuff done. Yeah, so order is the key. That's the new word for the day. So the deal is order, and what I want you to do, I want you to make sure you like, subscribe, share. This is how we continue to bridge the gap. Yes. Where, by all of these types of conversations, the information that we're sharing, the interviews that we're having with people and their stories. And, and I can tell you, Alita has a fascinating story. You've heard just a small part of it. We're gonna have her back. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you watch the development, uh, and I hope, and I know, I don't have to hope, I know that this is gonna serve as an inspiration for many of you because you see what people who lived in the West and they're able to come here and persevere. And that's just an inspiration for you. And so I hope that you'll take that uh, into cons consideration. I hope that you'll come visit and see for yourself and understand that there's really nothing to fear. You're gonna deal with drama wherever you go, but you come here, you see for yourself and who knows, who knows what the next steps, steps might be. So uh, until next time, take care. Be safe. Hey, so there you have it. What are you going to do if you're interested in what you just saw? Make sure you sign up for our info session to learn more information about how you can sign up to be a part of our real estate tour in Ghana. You can tour Alita's uh, 
uh, residence, her estate, her everything that she's doing in that particular area, as well as other real estate opportunities. We're gonna cover all of that, the due diligence process, interviews with real estate attorneys in Ghana. All you need to do is show up, sign up today, and also be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on our children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora, as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa. And they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.